Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode number 11 of Learning Motion Controls with PLCs. I realized on the last episode I said that we would be learning about relative and absolute motion on this video, but I misspoke. What we needed to do is home the axis first, so that's what we're going to attempt to do now. Okay, first we need to go over a few basics. I'm going to pull in a diagram that I found online, uh, reference to here. Uh, this is the difference here. If this is an encoder on the back of a motor, uh, we need to understand the difference between an incremental and an absolute encoder. So if you think about this, th this would be like an encoder optical disc. They don't all work this way, but it's a good way to demonstrate it. Uh, there's some other types like resolvers that use a little, I guess it's a magnet, and they have a couple of sine waves it produces, so it digitizes that into a position. But either way, we just mostly need to, to know the difference between an incremental and an absolute encoder, and for systems where we have no encoder. So on an incremental encoder like this, you'd normally see an LED in a, in a photodiode on the other side of it receiving a pulse. And so as it sees the rising and falling edges of these, this would be channel A and B. As it sees those edges, you can actually determine which direction it's moving. So that's called gray code, and you can look that up on your own if you want. Uh, but just know that you can tell the direction, but you can't actually tell the absolute clocking angle of this. So it could turn 45 degrees, and you'd never know it if you just powered up. So what homing really is, is when we power up, we have no idea what the state of the machine is. Somebody could have moved the axis by hand and we need to find that out by homing. So this is an example of an absolute encoder that can find itself within a single turn and decode these different pulses here. The state of all of these would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels. So it would look at these seven channels and say, okay, I know exactly what angle I'm at and down to what point with these, with a pretty small precision here. So um, that's an absolute single turn. And then there do exist things called absolute multi-turn that picture if this is like the minute hand on a clock there's also an hour hand on a clock that ticks around and it does that electrically or mechanically in a way that it doesn't need backup power so a very very common way that they handle this is they'll use single turn absolute because things just get really great once you have absolute uh, encoding on your motor but going to a multi-turn it doesn't just multi-turn encode forever you have typically mechanical limits there where it's going to roll over and a kind of a gearing situation like a clock and so what they'll do often is between the motor and the, the actual servo drive they'll put a little battery back up on this encoder so if it is spun by hand it still counts those pulses with a little battery circuit so there's some problems with that as well like you have to change the battery every eight to ten years or something like that and uh, potentially when you unhook the cable you lose that so you do always have to have a way to home this absolute encoder unless it's a multi-turn absolute in which case you're sometimes limited by the amount of travel the axis has if it's a one meter axis and you don't need that super super high accuracy uh, multi-turn absolute is a great way to go because then you just uh, avoid homing altogether but most of the time those are relatively new that they're coming into something reasonably expensive so in our case we're going to worry about homing still a lot of times just it's more cost effective anyway to throw an extra sensor on there and use an incremental encoder okay so we're done with that for now let's come back into TwinCat and see what we've done one thing i did was we're, we're getting rid of axis b because we don't have it hooked to anything so we're going to use this stepper axis uh, like we did in the previous videos a few things i've changed let's see i went into parameters here and under drive I inverted the motor polarity here, and under encoder, I inverted the counting direction as well. So what that does is now the plus sign on my motor will now go to the right on the screen when before it was going to the left. So that's how you would invert an axis. I could have inverted the, the phases of the motor as well just as easily. But because I did it in software here, we'll get to this later, but I also have to invert the calibration cam search, which is its direction it travels to find the home sensor and I inverted the sync, pul sync impulse search as well. So those are both opposites of what they were before, and I saved and activated. So that's what you missed before this video. One other thing I did, I came into our main program here where we had our axis B reference, and I unlinked that here in our instance. So these are all the variables that you have available for linking once you've compiled the program. 
and I just did a clear link, right click, change link, and change that over to Axis 4. So now we're talking to our stepper motor. It's worth mentioning here that the PLC doesn't care if this is a servo drive or a stepper drive. So that's one of the things you get when you use this NC system is it abstracts all that. So they all talk with the same type of axis reference and that's really nice when it comes to homing and stuff. If you do end up change, like upgrading from a stepper motor to a servo motor at some point, then it's really not all that painful because most of that functionality has already been abstracted at this layer. Okay, so we will need to add a few things to this program. One of which, let's put it up here, is the MC home function block. I come to the top of our program here. I've added it here with our same axis link. And this is something that um, is a little counterintuitive. It's called a calibration cam. All that means is, uh, I think that's a translation or something but it uh, from German, but it means home switch. So we're gonna use our procs. I've set the procs up to be our home switch. And this is just telling it on every scan, I'm gonna call you, whether you're enabled or not for execution, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna call you and tell you what access you wanna be looking at and that you wanna look at the calibration cam. This step is optional, but it sort of frees you up from having to call it in every single state later on. So I've just gotten in the habit of doing it. It's your call if you wanna do that or you wanna do it in the states. Okay, so moving down, I did add this, MC Home. And I call it false, and that's just so on the first scan or you know first time through, we make sure we called it false. If we want to reset back to state zero in the future, it's good to see that you have to put execute false, and you actually have to call it. Just calling MC home dot execute equals false does not call it. So you need these parentheses here, and uh, that should make sure we're reset and ready to go. So he's going to come through our thing just like he did before, but I did add this in as well just now. Uh, the current velocity command, which is the mapped version of our foot throttle, has to be greater than 1000. So this thing ranges from like 0 to 2500 or something like that. So I just wanted a trigger, and since we reused our procs, this is the only other input we have from the physical world to our PLC. So once we're reset and the motor's happy, powered up and everything, we go from the velocity. As soon as I step on that throttle, it's going to go, okay, state 100 which is down here, we're skipping these from old videos and I'll paste in my state 100. So here's state 100 and this is the beginning of the homing process here. All right, let's dig into this little bit of code that I just pasted in. Uh, first, I left myself a note to talk about MC homing mode. So if you look at the call to MC homing, let's get rid of that for now. MC homing mode, there's our inputs and outputs and homing mode is one of these that's sort of interesting. So what you can do is homing mode equals, and then I've found it's best to type this. You don't need it, but that will give you the autocomplete. So if you just type the data type and then a dot, and it'll show you a lot of these different homing modes. So if you mouse over these, it'll show you, or actually you have to click on them, um, a lot of these are not implemented, which is very, it, I guess that's odd, but this is just saying these are supported by PLC Open, but they're not necessarily implemented by Beckoff and Twincat. So they exist here, but don't expect them to really do anything. So there are some here that are, are worthwhile, MC Direct, direct homing from a user reference. So if you wanted to do something like a torque home to a hard stop and then direct home it right after that, you would put it somewhere and say, now this is zero, okay. Um, force calibration is the same thing, only it doesn't update the value. Uh, limit switch, non-implemented, reference pulse. So a lot of these things you can do, but typically you're going to have to fall back to the homing that's built into the drive and use that instead. So for this, we're going to leave it as default, which equates to whatever NC tells us to. Okay, another input here is position. And position would be if you wanted it to home to a sensor, but then end up at say 200 millimeters into your travel, so that you could st you wouldn't have to deal with negative values all the time. So I've used that quite a bit. Um, other options here, execute will definitely need that in a moment. Buffer mode not implemented as well. Uh, there's some options that you could use, but we don't need them. And then there's that calibration cam, which is our input for the the proc sensor here. So we probably don't really need to call it here, but let's do it just to be safe. And we're saying execute this. As soon as he goes busy, let's hop in and start looking for done. If you start looking for done before you see busy come true, you could be seeing the done of a previous cycle. So that's more important with absolute and relative moves, but keep that in mind that this structure um, 
comes in handy for most of these function blocks and really all function blocks communication function blocks and such it's nice to say if it's either watch for not done or watch for busy and then hop to your next state where you're going to hold our code execution right here okay in state 110 here we just check that it's done and that it doesn't have an error and we, it's always good to also look for done and it does have an error or really you can just look for an error else if he goes error then jump to state 999 which is usually kind of my convention for handling errors we're not going to bother with that right now or in this video series at all for that matter but after that he jumps a successful homing we'll jump to state 200 and we say ready to run so this is when we would start you know taking commands wait for the rest of the machine to come up stuff like that uh, what I've put in here is just it's waiting on my throttle again so that I can home it a few times in a row and I just jump right back and restart the homing so that I can test it out alright so that's about it we're all ready to go we'll just be in this endless loop of homing every time I push the uh, throttle position here so I'll just save it activate it and we'll go online and see if we can make it work alright so as we set up in a previous video I've got my stepper motor for my 3d printer hijacked and wired into an EL7041 slice we're running with no encoder right now and even though you can see a limit switch on the carriage of the 3d printer I'm not using that because I didn't want to unwire it all from the actual 3d printer controller so I just hooked up our procs that we've been using in the other videos uh, zip tied it to the side and it's just gonna sense the metal as it gets close so I'm going to push the, the throttle pedal now and watch it start homing. When it sees a cam pulse, it'll slide away, and then it's looking for an index pulse of the encoder, but we don't have that because we're running open loop right now. Uh, but normally it would go to an index pulse, which is really, really repeatable. This isn't going to be too bad, especially for something like a 3D printer that uh, just sort of needs a general home and everything else is relative. Uh, but if you were running on like a CNC machine that needs to be super repeatable, then you definitely want to go to an index pulse on the encoder. I'm going to hit it again one more time and we can watch it go. And some of those speeds and other settings are configurable in the NC parameters, so go check those out if you want. Otherwise, that's the end of the homing video and I'll see you on the next one.